there's a lot of elected officials in Washington who want to be on the right side of history, who want to be able to be in a position to do the best job they can possibly do for their constituents. And the way our political system works in Washington, whether you like it or not, favors are important. Knowing people is important. That's why there's endorsements. That's why there are supporters. And that's just the way it works in politics in this country. A lot of uh, elected officials have come out supporting Hillary Clinton. They've known her for a long time. They've known the Clintons for a long time, for whatever reason. But a few have held their powder dry. And the two co-chairs of the Progressive Caucus in the Democratic wing of the party, both Real Grijalva, Raul Grijalva uh, and also Keith Ellison, have stepped out and supported Bernie Sanders. And Ellison says it was his conscience. I wanted to hear more from John Nichols, Washington correspondent of the nation. John, good to have you with us. It's always good to be with you, Ed. The point I'm making is that the Clintons keep a list of who likes them and who doesn't, who supports them and who doesn't. In fact, there's been a lot of talk about Hillary Clinton's political hit list. I mean, they got a mind like an elephant. They just don't forget and they very well forgive. At least that's the back chatter politically. Um, is it risky business to come out and support Bernie Sanders? That's a really good question, Ed. I think that to some extent it depends on the sort of politician you want to be. And look, the truth of the matter is that uh, I think that most prominent political players with a lot of history in politics remember who backs them and who doesn't. I don't think yeah. that's just the Clinton. That's right. uh, I think that's pretty common in politics. And uh, one of the things that you hear from a lot of members of Congress is a, a frustration that they haven't had a lot of access to the Obama White House over the last few years. And, and so I do think that there are members of Congress who, when they're making their endorsements, they think, you know, am I going to have some access? Am I going to be able to talk to the president, have connections there? and uh, maybe genuinely deliver on policy and for my constituents. And, and I have to say that I've seen Hillary in action when she was a United States senator. She interacts very well. She, mm -hmm. does, con she does connect with her colleagues. She still has a lot of friends on the Hill. I think yeah. it's one of her strengths. She doesn't lock people out th that have supported her. And uh, I think there is an element of loyalty from Hillary Clinton to people who have supported her. And, and that's natural politics. Yeah. So that's and, and there's people that are gonna gonna see that as a way to advance things that they believe in and that frankly Ed, you and I might believe in. And and so that's one side of it. Backing an insurgent candidate is a different thing. It is uh you know Is Bernie Sanders an insurgent candidate? He sure is. Absolutely. When what is that when it, John, when's that label go away? I mean well, that's a know. good label. I look, this this year you want to be the insider or the, the insurgent? What do you want to be? Uh, the fact uh, okay, I guess I was looking for definition of the word insurgent. There I guess you go. It, yeah, it, 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 yeah, I got you. Okay. And, and that's all I would say. Yeah, I know some people use it as a dismissive term. I sure don't. Yeah. I, I think it's the person who is saying, you know, as Sanders does, I want a political revolution. Well, he's already moved Hillary on two big issues, Keystone and TPP. Absolutely. And, I'm not, and I, I'm not convinced that she would have moved had he not been in the race. And now he's leading. I uh, think, yeah, not I nationally think though. He's leading, he's, he's leading in the first two, in the first caucus state, the first primary state. Yeah, well, at least he's in the you know right up there in Iowa and, and clearly ahead in, in New Hampshire, and also frankly getting decent poll numbers all over the place for a, yeah. a guy who is you know frankly still unknown by a lot of Americans. And so what I think that Ellison and Grijalva have done, in my view, and I've talked to both of them. Uh, mm -hmm about this process they were going through, you know, what they were thinking about. I think they've endorsed that idea that you just referenced, Ed, and that is that they like this notion of moving Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. They also like Bernie Sanders, because he was one of them. He was the founder of the Progressive Caucus. And so I think this is a different kind of politics. I think they are betting on the possibility that no matter what happens in 2016, that what Bernie Sanders is doing is he's, he's changing the politics. He's yeah. changing 
the center of gravity. No one in the Senate has has uh, endorsed Bernie. No. Does that does that matter? No. <laughs> you know, Ed, if it mattered all that much, if it was the the be all and end all, um, you know, then how would Bernie be Sanders be getting all these crowds? Yeah. You know, I mean, what I think matters a lot here, in my view, is that Raul Grijalva is a a deep rooted, hardwired labor progressive Latino activist. He's somebody yeah. with deep roots. I think the same is true with uh, Keith Ellison. Yeah. And so they, in a way, they're going to be seen as important congressional endorsements. They are leaders of, the, of a major caucus, but they are also of a very different kind of politics than most members of Congress. Yeah. They Bernie, go to rallies. Bernie prides himself on bringing people together. This is a bunch of carts before a horse. What if he gets the nomination? What if he wins and he has no endorsements of anybody in the Senate and his own party? We have a clean gene going into the White House and beyond. He goes in. He doesn't know anybody anything. Well, he, he, can tur- he, he, can turn to, he can turn to anybody in his own party and say, you know what? <laughs> Where were you when I needed you? I did it on my own. I did it with this movement. Well, Who you know knows? What, that's, that's, that's not actually what Bernie Sanders would say. You know that, Ed. You know him No, well. he's a war. He, he brings people together. No that's doubt. right. He would get in there. And this is the interesting thing. I can tell you this, if Bernie Sanders were to get the nomination and were to get elected president, there wouldn't be any Republicans that endorsed him, right? Yeah. And yet, I will guarantee you that Bernie Sanders would be calling in some of the most conservative Republicans in Congress and saying, remember when we worked together against that trade deal? Yeah. Remember when we worked together against, you know, that military appropriation that was just wasteful? Remember when we worked together on on this or that? He'd actually be looking to govern. Yeah, I think he would. John Nichols, uh, what's riding on tonight's debate in Las Vegas? Who, who could, lot, I, asked Bob, I asked Bob Schrum the same question. Who, who, who could be the big winner? Who could be the big loser? Who, who stands to do what? Well, I, I think that, that in an odd kind of way, Clinton and Sanders are, are, are both at a point already in this campaign where uh, it's unlikely that they're going to go at each other. Yeah, it's no. likely that they're going to highlight their strengths, and and everybody will know they're each trying to gain advantage. I think that's good for both of them to an extent, but I have to say it's especially good for Bernie Sanders. Because remember, polling tells us that millions of Americans really don't know who Bernie Sanders is yet. They they have very little familiarity with him. And that is the interesting thing. A lot of these people aren't expecting too much. Uh, When I say a lot of these people, I'm talking about uh, all these political uh, talking heads on all the cables and whatnot. It's almost as if, okay, Bernie's ahead, but what's it mean? And he probably, will, it'll just be Hillary's show. I get that feeling mm. every conversation that's out there. And so I, I think that based on that, this could be a big night for Bernie. And I hope it is. I want him to be the nominee. I want him to be the president. I think he's best suited for it all. That's not to say I wouldn't support any other Democrat, but that's where I am right now. And I will be in the spin room for Bernie Sanders tonight. John Nichols, always great to visit. All the best, my friend. Thanks so much. It is great being on with you, my friend. John Nichols, Washington Correspondent of the Nation. This is Ed Schultz News and Commentary, brought to you by Communication Workers of America, Alliance for American Manufacturing, BioGreen Clean, and the iSave team. We're back tomorrow.